We can tell you this right now. Dollar bulls are very happy at the moment. If you look at how the dollar is trading against other currencies, most of the other currencies, from the euro to the pound sterling to the Canadian dollar, Mexican peso, are all down against the greenback. As for the markets, the markets did plunge right after the opening bell. Then at 10.40 a.m. Eastern, the Dow tanked four. 100 points as President Trump's trade advisor, Peter Navarro, then rushed in to hold a call with reporters while he said there's no progress in talks with China. Ultimately, he said this will be bullish for American businesses. Now, whether that happens and whether that plays out remains to be seen. But one guy who's been in the thick of trade deals and disputes agrees. He says there's no need to panic yet. President Obama's former Undersecretary of Commerce for International Trade, Stefan Selig, joins us in a Fox Business exclusive. This is a pretty interesting perspective you have here, Stefan. You agree with Navarro, correct? Well, I agree with him that there's no reason to panic and we're not in a trade war. Mm -hmm. And I do agree with him, frankly, that there are some real issues that the administration is taking head on. Where I don't agree with him and the president is doing this with tariffs, where fundamentally have never been effective. And I don't think they're going to be effective here either, Liz. So uh, while I agree that they've diagnosed some real problems, I also think that they have uh, not come up with a cure. Let me push back on this. And I'm doing this with almost every guest who says, I agree with President Trump. He's right. Things need to be fair. But this is not the way to go about it. That's a little ridiculous, in my opinion, because everybody has said that they tried this before and this didn't work. He's got to try something. He's certainly got the world's attention. He does have our market's attention, but Shanghai's getting hit hard. Who's going to blink first? It almost seems like Xi Jinping, the president of China, may have to blink first, or could I be wrong there? Well, I mean, I think there are so many things to say there. One is, let's go and talk about what the tariffs actually do, right? So they are going to make our products more expensive for U.S. consumers because these are just a tax. They are going to make our products that we manufacture less globally competitive because over half of the imports that we get from around the world are imports and not final goods. And as a result of that, it's going to hurt our manufacturers because the de de demand is going to go down. Right. We're, at, we're actually seeing that with SunPower. They said they buy some of their components from China. They're now asking for an exemption. How does that work in the United States? How well, does that work in D.C. at the Commerce Department? Are they going to have to start picking winners? That they, well, that's exactly, first of all, this is all uncharted territory, right? Because this has not happened in any prior administrations. Well, so wait a minute. Process... I, I brought up Obamacare because the minute that was instituted, a whole bunch of companies started banging on the door of the Obama administration, who then granted hundreds of companies waivers from their own policies. Yes, well, that, that, those were not... Um, tariffs in the Commerce Department, which was not a sector of the government okay, that I, I was see. in. But so I, I, just I guess I'm just trying to that. use the best example that would be similar. And, and the Obama administration got reamed by the Republicans on that. You know, part of the problem is this is all creating the fact that we're having this conversation means that there's so much uncertainty about the way it's going to play out. And that lack of predictability is reflected in the markets, as you talked about earlier, with the rising VIX index, which, which covers predictability in the U.S. capital markets. But fundamentally and much more importantly, it's going to affect U.S. companies because it's going to either delay, postpone, or fundamentally affect investment, affect investment decisions because people just don't know the world in which they're going to be operating in. You say not a time to panic right now. Okay, what indicators do you must that might you have to see and what should our viewers be looking for when they should start realizing this might be hitting them uh, and certainly companies from whom they buy? Well, I think there's a whole host of things. The equity markets are obviously a very good gauge, something that you cover um, regularly and uh, up to the minute. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing, um, frankly, is to look at some of the other measures other than just tariffs that the administration might deploy. So they might, for example, uh, put together a list of specific products that are going to be under export controls that U.S. companies will not be allowed to export to, to China mm -hmm. or countries around the world, uh, for example. And they may actually begin to restrict investments into the United States. So if they take these additional steps other than just tariffs, I think then we're going from a trade skirmish, as, as Mr. Navarro says, to potentially closer to a war. Yeah, he called it a trade dispute. Before we go, inflationary indicators, which is a fancy way of saying price Prices. hikes. I want you to tell my viewers when they will start seeing higher prices on the can of beer, which is made of aluminum, or the Ford F-150 all aluminum vehicle that they might want to buy. It's going to be a very long time. And that's well, one that's of the reasons. Well, that's good news, right? 
Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I think we are in a dispute and not a war. Okay. Because, frankly, this is really incremental at the moment. But the fact is, it is, in, is, it is escalating. So it went from 50 to 200. And I think for sure the Chinese are going to respond in kind. Then the next question is, what is the administration going to, going to do next? But as it stands today, I think uh, Secretary okay. Ross was quite clear, this is not going to have a material impact on consumer prices. All right. Stefan Selig, thank you.